Okay, Pinky Swear. Pinky Swear is a decentralized, non-custodial web wallet for Handshake. Uh, what that means is it's a web wallet, as in um, the user interface you can expect, login name and password is all user needs to know. It's non-custodial, meaning the user has control of their private keys all the time. And it's decentralized in that all the data for the protocol is stored on the Handshake blockchain. So anybody can spin up a pinky server. You can spin up your own pinky server. If one pinky server goes down, you can use another one. Um, I'll describe the protocol a little bit and then hopefully do a demonstration and then show how we can use it um, in combination with uh, Cyanet to host Skylinks on Handshake TLD. Um, so the process goes like this. Uh, in the client, which can be a web browser, can also be Node.js. I haven't written the interface for that yet. Um, we have a web interface now, but the code works equally well in both. And I'll show that in a little bit too. Um, so anyway, the client generates a key, a uh, private key, a mnemonic seed, um, and derives an address from that, and then encrypts that key with the user's password. So now we have an encrypted uh, private key, and we're gonna take that encrypted blob and put it in a text record in the resource for the handshake name. So that'll go on the blockchain and in the handshake root zone under your name will be an encrypted uh, mnemonic seed. Uh, then we will transfer the name to the address derived from that seed. Um, and once that's confirmed, then what we have is a handshake TLD where the private key that owns that TLD is encrypted and stored in the zone. So again, like in the zone on the blockchain in the DNS record for a name is its own private key. Um, and then once that's set up, then the user can access that private key basically from any website by just taking that record off the blockchain, uh, decrypting it, and then they can use that private key. So it's also kind of cool because on Handshake, we have uh, essentially two different types of assets that both use the same UTXO system. There's the names, the TLDs, and HNS, the coin, the token, the money. Pinky Swear and the client um, only deals with the names. Um, so the wallet associated with this protocol doesn't actually have any money, doesn't have a history or UTXO. It only needs to know the UTXO that owns the name. Um, and then it can just sign an update that trans that adds DNS data to that name. And the server will fund the transaction. So it works kind of like a coin join. Um, the client basically signs the DNS update, which is part of a transaction, sends that to the server that just pays the minor fee. So there is some uh, generosity involved with running a pinky swear server. There might be some incentives, or you could just run one your own um, with your own wallet. Um, okay, so I will uh, start off by showing how the website works. That actually begins with this page. There's there, the steps are broken up into kind of two days. It's actually that the second part happens after the name has been transferred on Handshake, which takes two days. Um, so I'll, we'll we'll do that a lot quicker because I'm going to be using test network, but. Uh, so we begin the protocol and we're going to generate a seed. You can also paste your own seed in here um, if you have a, a different backup. Now, um, some savvy crypto users will want to copy down this mnemonic phrase, but if the whole protocol goes well, you won't actually need to do that. Um, the receive address is where we're going to transfer the name to um, eventually. Um, and then we get to pick a passphrase. Okay, picks a really easy one. It has to be at least 20 characters and that's because the encrypted ciphertext is public, it goes on the blockchain. Um, so we need that to be encrypted with a really strong password. And also you'll notice how slow um, encryption is. I'll click this and we'll see it should take a few seconds. Um, and that's because we want to resist brute force attacks. So if it's too easy to um, decrypt this blob, um, then brute force attacks are easier and can happen quicker. So right now it's configured for 10 million rounds of um, password based key derivation function two using SHA-256 and 128 bit Salt. So hopefully this is good enough, but um, that can be changed for different security reasons. And also I should say, um, when you generate your, the seed, this is happening in the browser, this demonstration, but the code runs equally well in Node.js and I'll show you how later. So Node.js is a more secure environment than using the browser. Okay, so what we have here is a handshake resource, a handshake resource. This is a, a, an object that holds all the DNS records um, that go in the root zone and the handshake root zone on the blockchain. Um, it's formatted in two ways. The first way is um, the way you would paste into uh, the CLI send update command. And the second way um, is raw hex. And um, the raw hex is great for name base. So I'll show you quickly. Um, if you have a name on name base like this one, Florida Man Birthday Challenge, this might be a familiar interface for you. And you know that you can go down here and set the DNS records for your domain. Um, 
this interface is actually a little too simple for what we want for the type of record that we're posting. Luckily, Namebase has this awesome, really great that they're offering this to just post raw hex right there. So this is, in, this is a serialized uh, handshake resource data. It's in a very specific format. Um, and Namebase is allowing you just to give them a whole blob. So if, if you're generating this hex here, you just go ahead and paste it into Namebase. Um, unfortunately, Bob doesn't have the, um, the, the perfect interface for what we need to do. So I'll show you in Bob, I have this name Pinky. This is a test network. Uh, I've run an auction. I've won the name Pinky on test network and I'll show you um, how we're gonna use it. So uh, you go to manage my domain in Bob and you could add text records here in Bob. Um, unfortunately, they, they're, they're missing something that makes it a little bit easier to use with Pinky Square. So we're gonna use um, the command line instead, but these things could, could get better. Um, okay, so I'm gonna take the JSON here and I'm gonna go to my terminal where I have Bob Wallet running and I'm going to make the command. Uh, pinky is the name, send update pinky and we'll put this JSON in quotes. Okay, great. So uh, now I've taken the uh, encrypted mnemonic seed um, that I've generated here in the client and I've now added it to the blockchain um, in the zone for the name Pinky. Uh, next, I'm gonna generate a few blocks just to sort of confirm it. Okay, um, so at this point, we should be able to get name resource for Pinky. And we can see that that weird base uh, 32, base 64 blob uh, is there on the blockchain. Okay, great, that's great news. So now we can um, move on to the next step. And so the next step is to transfer the name to the address. Um, this is something that can, so in, if, if your name is on Namebase, they don't have the interface yet for transferring names out of Namebase. But my understanding is you can contact, contact their customer support and they'll do it for you. Um, in Bob Wallet, in the latest version of Bob Wallet, there is, um, this interface down here at the bottom. So we will transfer and uh, add the uh, address there. And this is a transaction. So we put in the password and now that is submitted to the network. Mine a few more blocks here. Uh, if you've ever transferred a name on Handshake, you know that it's a two-step process. First you transfer it and then you need to finalize. Uh, oh, I actually need a few more blocks. Okay. Where's my name? Okay. Manage and transfer. Hmm, still not letting me finalize. Let's give this thing a little refresh here. And pinky. Okay, great. <laughs> Now we can finalize the name. This is another transaction. Uh, normally on mainnet, uh, the time between transfer and finalize is two days. On reg test, obviously, it can go a lot faster because I can generate these blocks um, much quicker. So we are confirm that finalize with another 10 blocks. And now, um, if you notice in Bob, I'm going to give it another refresh here just to make sure um, that the uh, pinky name is gone. So the name is no longer owned by Bob Wallet. It is now owned by this address over here that was generated in the web browser. And this is the private key, the mnemonic seed that derived that address, which we've encrypted and placed on the blockchain. So um, now we're ready for the fun stuff. Now we're, we've basically, the setup process is done and now the fun and the fast stuff can happen next. Um, so uh, Skybin is this thing that Skynet offers where um, they will generate a Skynet link for you and put any type of data um, uh, in their file system. So I've gone ahead and pasted the Handshake white paper into Skybin, generated a Skylink, and this will be my Skylink. So I'm going to copy this and then we're ready to do pinky square part two. Um, so we're going to enter the domain name and this is going to retrieve, whoops, I guess I did this with an IE. This is going to retrieve from the server, which has a handshake full node, this encrypted blob, which we've already seen. I posted it to the blockchain. Now it's being retrieved. Now we're going to decrypt that blob. Okay. This should take an equal amount of time, a couple seconds. Okay, uh, we see the address here. This would be the same address that we generated back here in step one. This is the address that we transferred the name to with Bob Wallet. Everything's good so far. Now we can uh, paste our Skylink. Uh, has to start with sia colon slash slash. That's part of their protocol. 
Um, and then the last thing is to click update. Great, and now we've got the success, the success message from the server. And uh, we can see more information about uh, the, the transaction that was transmitted. But at this point, we are done. So we can go take a look at the logs here and we can see um, in the, uh, this is the Bob log up here on the top. So this is our handshake full node, what would be running on the pinky server. You can see that um, transaction was, was sent out. Um, and now if we do a couple more confirmations here, this time when I get the name resource for pinky, you can see the C link has been, um, has been added to the blockchain. And even cooler than that, we can actually dig uh, at Bob, which is on port 2539 in reg test, pinky txt. Oops, got the port wrong. 25349. Okay, and there's our seal link along with, um, so the first text record here is the encrypted pinky swear blob. The second text record here is um, the actual uh, SIA, the Skylink. So the thing I don't have set up in advance is um, a Skynet portal uh, on my computer in reg test, or we'd be able to click and, and go to that link right away. Um, but that's how that works. Um, and so the last thing I'll, I'll show really quick is a little bit of the code. Um, this is what happens in the client. On the left, we're looking at pinky.js. This um, is the actual functions that gener generate the key, derive, encrypt, stuff like that. It's using a library uh, a class called HNS Wallet. The interesting thing about both of these, the, the, um, the client, the in-browser JavaScript, and the HNS Wallet object is that they accept a variable called backend. Um, and uh, where's the other script here, right? Uh, and here's backend. And backend can be one of two crypto backends, one for Node.js and one for the browser. So in crypto browser, here's the one on the right. Um, this is using window.crypto.subtle, the crypto library that's built into the browser because it's faster than trying to do everything in JavaScript. When you're in Node.js, we can actually do everything in JavaScript or even faster in C using the B crypto library. So crypto browser and crypto node, these are two crypto libraries that have the same API and encrypted things and decrypt things in the exact same way. So ideally you could set this up with a web browser and then use a um, Node.js client to decrypt it and, and they should be equivalent. Um, so I've written the, uh, the web wallet that I just demonstrated. I have not yet written the Node.js, the client. Um, there's some tests uh, in the repo that you can run that will demonstrate um, how a Node.js client could be written if a user wants to do this um, protocol uh, in Node.js, which would be more secure than the browser. Okay, that's Pinky Swear. Um, thank you.